Assalamu alaikum. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me, having my daily, daily cup of coffee. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about what do I do to stay healthy. <coughs> All right, and before I start, I just want to say that I'm 60 years old. Okay, getting close to 61 actually in a few months. So um, the earlier you start this, the better. All right. <clears throat> I'm not a vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I'm not a raw foodist. I've been all of those. Well, vegan and raw foodist. <clears throat> and I will say that's fine. Actually, I don't have a problem with being vegan or, or raw foodist. It has many benefits. <coughs> the problem is, it's very expensive, okay? Because <coughs> to get everything you need, all right? And I want to say as well, diet is not everything. Dieting by itself is not enough. To, to eat the healthy food is not enough, not today, all right? Because the fact is, <coughs> besides the fact that you have food that uh, having all the additives, all the kind of really garbage that they put in food today, aspartame, MSG, uh, you know, injections of, like if you're a meat eater, for example, they put hormone injections and antibiotics and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, there's so much stuff in food today that it's going to be very difficult just to eat healthy. <coughs> and the fact that we are living, most of us, in cities where it's very polluted, air pollution, sound pollution, radiation pollution, there are so many things. You can hear it's really noisy here even. So, all right. <coughs> so my point is, it's not enough just to eat healthy. I wish it was, but it's not. So I want to go through all of the different things that I do. All right? <clears throat> I was a raw foodist for a couple of years. I was 100% vegan for a couple of years. And I did see, it was, I'm, I mean, I'm always living, living healthy. It's not just, like I said, it's not just me dieting or eating a healthy diet that is part of my health. I, I always been working out, I've always been, you know, avoiding a lot of stuff that people eat normally. <coughs> so it's not enough. So let me get through my daily, all my daily health regimen, all right? <coughs> Number one, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I make a homemade, homemade, protein smoothie. I don't, you know, even though we did try it, but actually it wasn't, it wasn't that great. I was, uh, we tried some uh, protein powder, even, even one of these that's uh, bacon, pea protein. It tastes like crap, first of all, <laughs> okay. And it's very expensive. So what I do instead is I combine different things to make my own to get the same amount of protein, but additionally it's all made at home and actually it's more economical to, uh, to do that actually. So uh, let me tell you what I'm doing. <clears throat> I have this nice Nutribullet blender, they're very good. I can definitely recommend that every kitchen should have one. Okay, so I take a big, a big spoon with top on of almond, ground almond. I buy the almond and I grind it and put it in a container because it doesn't, you know, oxidate or anything. It doesn't lose any nutrients when you grind it. So it's a big spoon of almond. Then I take a big spoon of cashew. These are some of the nuts. I choose the nuts that has high level of protein compared to other nuts and other things, other vitamins and minerals and whatever. Anyway, so one spoonful 
almond, one spoonful of cashew, and <clears throat> half a spoon of uh, flax seeds that are ground. It must be ground, otherwise they pass right through you and you don't get the benefit. All right. <clears throat> All right. Then it has a quarter of a teaspoon of amla, a quarter of a teaspoon, a little bit less than that, of cinnamon, and you have to make sure you get good quality cinnamon, and um, a spoon of chocolate, raw chocolate powder, real chocolate powder, not the one that has other things in it. It has to be completely 100% pure. Okay, the darker the better. All right? And that's it. Then I take water, um, what is that? It's probably around half a liter of water, and then I blend it in my Nutribullet. <coughs> All right? This is my own, you know, mix. For my wife, I add half a spoon of baobab, okay, and one banana, okay, half a spoon of baobab, if you can get it, that's great, and one banana, not a very big one, just a medium sized banana, because <clears throat> she, you know, worry about losing weight, for me, I, I stay the same, I, I weigh the same, <laughs> you might not believe this, I weigh the same when I was 20 years old, when I was 30 years old, when I was 40 years old, when I was 50 years old, when I'm now 60 years old, I've been weighing the same since I was 20. All right? <clears throat> it might, depending on, you know, how much I work and, you know, depending maybe traveling and other things, so it might move up and down a kilo or two, okay? My ideal weight, and I'm 180 centimeter, okay? So my ideal weight is 75 kilo, okay? I have gone up to 76 and a half, I've gone down to 72 a couple of times when I'm really, really working out hard and not getting quite enough protein, I might go down to 72, all right? So, you know, that's how it is. And 60, don't forget. All right, so that's my smoothie. That's the first thing I do in the morning. <coughs> Besides that, um, hmm. besides that, now, this is before our normal prayer time. I make my smoothie, I make a smoothie for my wife. And <clears throat> now it's time to pray, we get all those things out of the way. As soon as we are done, <clears throat> right before sun up, we're doing a cold plunge. And if maybe you saw the little video I have here where it's, I'm demonstrating or I'm showing kind of, it's, it's very simple, okay, you can use ice. You buy ice somewhere or you fill some bags or containers with ice and put it in your freezer so you don't have to invest in a, in a water chiller, which what we have, so that we start, we start that when we go to bed at night. So when we wake up in the morning, it's like 17, 16, 15, 14, down to 12 degrees Celsius. 12 is uh, kind of the optimal, all right, but it takes a little while to get used to 12 because that's quite cold, okay? All right, <clears throat> so we do a cold plunge, uh, five minutes, okay, the whole body inside, okay, relax, nice breathing, control your breathing, five minutes. Next, after that, without drying off, we go up to where we can find the sun, the first sunlight is the best sunlight you can get we get the sunlight, expose as much skin as possible, obviously. And while we are doing that, <coughs> we are doing uh, a little bit modified version of the Wim Hof breathing. Wim Hof uh, has a lot of different benefits, breathing, cold plunge, different exercises. So we are doing the Wim Hof breathing, five rounds, 30 breaths, 
retention and uh, five rounds of that. Very nice, and you can really feel it. This, all of this is very antidepressive, it's very anti-anxiety, um, it's very uh, immune boosting. There are so many benefits, it's like you can just Google it and you will see. If you go to the Wim Hof page, for example, they have a page where that's, you know, the button where it says benefit, and you can see the benefits of the different things with links to the scientific research and evidence. So, you know, have to take my word for it. Okay, <clears throat> what's next? So after this Wim Hof breathing, we do a yoga, uh, modified yoga. We don't you do the traditional yoga, we just do our own thing. And it's based on stretching. We stretch the back, we stretch the shoulders, we stretch the legs, we stretch the neck, okay? Um, so we're stretching the body for 15 minutes and then we do 100 push-ups, proper push-ups, not these sissy push-ups, okay? Real push-ups, okay? If you can't do push-ups, you can always do it on your knees and maybe you can do five and then 10 and so on and so on. And then after that, you get off your knees and do proper push-ups. So you can work up to it, all right? Just try and, and you know, even you do 10, well, then you rest for a minute and do another 10 and, you know, do that 10 times until you have 100. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the next thing. Okay. Now, this is about the time that uh, my wife starts her work. And I continue because that is my work. Okay, I'm a doctor of natural medicine, naturopathic doctor, so that's my work, is to stay healthy and to always be on, what you call it, um, on the forefront of what's going on, make sure that I know the latest research. And of course, I can't just talk about things, oh, you have to do this and this and this to stay healthy. I have to do it myself. It's not enough, I tell people what to do, I must do it. So I spend most of my day, from my work, from my wake up in the morning until I sleep at night, 50% of my day is doing things to stay healthy. Whether it's cooking, whether it's eating, whether it's doing some kind of workout or exercise or, you know, yeah, okay. Let me continue. So, <clears throat> the next thing I do here is I just made my coffee. Of course, it's organic coffee. Uh, this is a blend that I'm making myself. It's um, half uh, Ethiopian coffee and half Atikayo. That's my favorite mix. Okay, and I have these uh, that I eat. This is uh, my own. I, I I once bought these protein bars, and they cost like um, eight thousand for one. And it's tiny. It weighs like. 15 gram or 20 gram or something and it has 50% protein in it or something so it's like uh, 10 gram of protein seven maybe or whatever okay so seven thousand eight thousand you know this half a dollar maybe in some countries that oh that's cheap right but actually it's not cheap okay because the fact is I make my own okay this is this is my own uh, protein bar all right this is what I do. <clears throat> I take almonds, cashew, all ground, of course, uh, coconut, oats, okay? I mix these dry things together. Then I add a spoonful of honey. I make this a big bowl. I make like 20 bars at a time, okay? I mix this first, there's four. Then I take a couple of big spoons of black seeds, mix into water, blend it, and then I pour it inside with the honey. So now I make it like almost like a dough, all right? Next, I make these, you know, very artistic shapes. <laughs> Not so artistic. Anyway, I make these shapes uh, that is like a big protein bar. You can buy some protein bar, they're like 25, 30, even up to 40 gram. So this is a nice big size, all right? So I think it's probably about 40, 45 gram. So I make these and uh, I put
put it in the oven, bake it a bit, and then I melt some pure dark chocolate, all right, and I put it on top. Because dark chocolate, if it's pure, is actually also improving your health, ex extending your life, okay, and reducing your chance of dying from different, different things, cardiovascular, and you name it, okay. So, I put a couple of raisins in sometimes, which is fine. And uh, then I, once it's melted, the chocolate, I just put some, a spoonful of chocolate, maybe half a spoon, on each one, and I put it in the freezer. I make about 20 at a time, so now we have for 10 days, all right? And every morning with my nice organic coffee, I have one of these bars. I have kind of eaten half of it already. Mm. Delicious, okay? All right, so, what's next? Now, from that time, from this, my coffee time, until my, excuse me, lunch time, I don't have a proper breakfast as people, it's the most important meal of the day. Not really, okay? I would say lunch is the most important meal of the day. And dinner is the most important meal of the day, if you eat correctly. Now, so let me see now. I eat around 11 o'clock my lunch. It's a low carb meal, all right? It's a stir fry, and of course we only use coconut oil. All these other kind of oils are not good for you, all right? Most oils are bad for you. Only coconut oil can be used if you have it. All right, okay, so <clears throat> what do we do? We stir fry mushrooms, tomatoes, onions, garlic, uh, some peppers, some uh, tempeh, and sometimes I have a piece of meat, maybe a steak or something like that, and I eat it with french fries that are air fried, not fried in oil, air fried. All right, and sometimes an avocado on the side. That's my lunch. Okay, so between this meal and that lunch, I um, do qigong. I exercise with qigong exercises. I do meditation. This is special kind of meditation that's based on qigong breathing, abdominal breathing, reverse abdominal breathing, embryonic breathing, um, all kinds of different kind of breathing, depending on the level. And then I do Tai Chi and Tai Chi swords and, you know, other kinds of things like that. And um, I also, I play a little instrument, uh, something called an oud. Um, maybe you, if you see some of my pictures, or I might have a video somewhere on this Instagram channel here where I have a little oud playing. Anyway, so this is me, and this is, yeah, not that I am a musician or anything, I, not that I'm not really good, but I do that because music actually has a way of stimulating your health. Some music, not all music. And playing music, because you have to coordinate your fingers and you have to stick to the correct uh, timing and so on, it's actually a very good exercise to do. And it satisfies me, satisfies some of my needs. I also play chess, which is also a very good exercise for the brain that will improve your health. Especially as you get older, playing chess is actually a very extremely good exercise. I can recommend it. And it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. The fact that you practice, and maybe you improve with practice, but the fact that you're practicing chess and you have to think three, four, five steps ahead, it trains your brain. It trains your brain when you're playing chess. And those functions in your brain is something we need to use more and more as we get older because you can get Alzheimer's, you can get dementia, you can have so many different problems and those will be reduced the more you use those functions, right? All right, all the synapses and all of that stuff. You can Google all of this 
you know, I'm, I don't have, if I have to go into all the details about it, this would be like the whole day of this video, so, all right, so I, so I do these, these things, my, my fun activities until around lunchtime. And, <clears throat> oh, between this and lunch, I'm also doing a fruit smoothie, by the way, all right? My fruit smoothie, again, I'm using a Nutri-Pulit blender. I'm using the big one because uh, I'm making for two or three people at least at the same time. Anyway, my smoothie is, and this is especially for men's health, but women's health as well, pineapple, watermelon, <coughs> mango, uh, merbe or mulberry, as it's called in English. Uh, strawberries, uh, we tried it. No, it doesn't work for some reason. Uh, banana. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, guava and apple. Okay, I picked those specific fruit. These seven things we always put in our smoothie. Every single day we get a nice big cup of this fruit smoothie, all right? Excellent, all right? You get a lot of good vitamins and some fructose, of course, which is good for your body, as long as you don't drink like a liter per day. A nice big cup, just like coffee. Coffee is great. One cup of coffee per day, perfect. Five cups, 10 cups, maybe not so great, all right? Because there has to be a balance of what you get of different things. And the fact is, if you drink too much or eat too much of one thing, it means you eat too little of something else. Because there's a limit to how much you can drink and how much you can eat. So you have to, you know, make sure that everything is balanced, you know. Carbs is not bad. Carbs is not bad. Yeah, you can get bad carbs and bitter carbs and whatnot, but in, in, in general, carbs are not necessarily bad. You just got to make sure that you eat it at the right time and at the right amount, okay? And this, of course, is, uh, you know, how much is the right, you know, that's, you know, depends on you. How much do you weigh? How much do you exercise? How busy are you? Are you sitting on your butt all day? in an office eight hours a day and then sitting in your car one hour one way and one hour to go home, that's 10 hours sitting down per day. Maybe your car needs a little bit less than somebody else who's working out, for example. So definitely work out, right? So all right, so, so we got the lunch, all right? And um, another thing I do, uh, I'm in the middle of doing, uh, of, of working on this, on, on building it. I'm creating a floating tank. Sensory deprivation uh, part. All right. It's basically, you can Google it, sensory deprivation of floating tank. All right. You are basically lying in a pool full of Epsom salt. 300 kilo an average, right, of Epsom salt. Epsom salt bath is actually good for you, right? But I'm not doing it just for that. So uh, as I, when I'm finished building it, I will make a video explaining how I build it and, you know, how does it work. And you can Google it, floating tank, okay? It costs a fortune if you want to go to some spa and do that kind of thing, because like a couple of hundred thousand at least, okay? So you take 10 times and you can pretty much build one for yourself. All right, so uh, that's another thing that's in my regimen. I'm not doing that at the moment because I'm in the process of actually building it, all right, during the day, one hour. And that's like the best form of meditation you can imagine to be in a flotation tank for one hour. That can blow your mind, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can Google that, okay. Now, I have other activities that's kind of irrelevant to the health aspects of it. It's not, you know, something I do for health necessarily. Okay, now my dinner. Okay, now some people, they think I'm a little bit crazy. I eat dinner at 4.30. Yes, I eat dinner at 4.30. Every time people hear that, they're like, 
Oh, but I eat dinner at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock. I'm like, yeah, you are out of your mind, okay? I eat dinner at 4.30, no later than 5. Okay, there's two reasons. Number one, the first reason why I eat dinner so early is because I sleep early. I want to be asleep by 8 o'clock at night. All right? My goal is to sleep at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. All right? Okay, for two different reasons. <clears throat> Number one, more than people imagine, we need the real light from the sun, daylight. You should try and live by the cycle of the light, of the sun. We are created in a way that that's the best thing for us. So that means that by, the, by, by seven o'clock, the sun is down. I've done my, my last evening prayer, you know, Isha prayer. I've done that already, you know, before I go to bed. And there's nothing else happening, right? I go to bed. Yes. I don't go to bed with my laptop. I don't go to bed with my phone. I don't go to bed with any gadgets. It's better if they're not even entering the bedroom. All right? And then I read, yes, I read a real book made out of paper for about half an hour in bed. All right? Because it's a way to stimulate yourself, to prepare yourself to actually have a proper sleep. All right? Blue screens, which is pretty much all gadgets today have a screen, right? It actually reduces the quality of your sleep. And the ultimate, the, 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 the best thing is actually not to, to, um, to use a screen, to not to be close to a screen, or EMF even, as well, both of those things, at least one hour, if not two hours, before you actually sleep. That's the best thing. Because it activates the brain in a way that even though you might fall asleep, and that might not even be easy, but if you do fall asleep, it's not the same kind of sleep, the quality, right? Okay, so I read a book, right? Probably I'll end up going to bed at, you know, 7 o'clock, reading for half an hour, and then after I finish reading, it rarely takes me more than 5 minutes to actually fall asleep, a proper sleep, all right? So I sleep and I always get up at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, all right? Yes, 3 to 3.30 I would say, okay? And <clears throat> I set my alarm to 3.30. I sometimes wake up a little bit earlier. So, so 3.30, so you can think, I, I'm fully asleep at 8 o'clock. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 30. So seven and a half hour of good quality sleep, all right? A lot of, like I'm a Muslim, so I get up and I have my morning prayers like everybody else, okay? But the problem is most Muslims, they pray and then they go back to bed because they did not get enough sleep because they did not get in bed early enough, right? The thing is, you thinking, oh, well, at night, I have so much to do, so I can go to sleep at 7 o'clock, like Dr. Hazan is doing. Oh, well, the fact is, you are spending the time after praying, all right, you spend the time after praying in bed that you could have just gone to bed earlier and then do those things in the morning when you are refreshed. Because the fact is, you are when you're busy working and doing things, especially when you're doing something electronic, uh, online and whatever, right? It influences your sleep. And maybe when you're trying to put your head on a pillow, your mind is still on those things that you were doing. You know, you need to learn how to turn off, okay, so you can sleep. Rather than working and then try and force yourself to sleep, and then maybe the first hour you are in bed, you're just lying there struggling to sleep. Not very smart. All right? Don't sleep after prayer. Get those things done. If you have to, do a little zikir or whatever. But 
get those things done that you would have done before you went to sleep. And sleep early, you will get a better sleep. All right? That's the reason. Oh, then, by the way, so after my dinner, which is at 4.30, like I said, I spent half an hour in a dry sauna, like the Finnish type sauna that they have in Finland. Not the steam one. Okay, not that that is necessarily so bad, but the dry sauna has more benefits. Okay, so I spent half an hour eight, between 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, 30 minutes. Okay, it works wonders. All right, yeah, not everybody can build a sauna in their house, but there are tricks to actually do that. You can actually buy. If you have a room in your house, uh, an extra bathroom that you're not that you don't have to use, many people have three bathrooms in their house. Convert one of them into a sauna. It's, it doesn't take you just insulate and get a, a sauna heater. They they are not that expensive. Install it. <clears throat> make sure you don't have you know suction of cold air into the room. Boom! You've got a sauna. Not that expensive. We have converted one of our bathrooms into a sauna. So I spent half an hour in the sauna, all right? And then I do some breathing as well. I do the sauna right after my dinner, because my dinner is early, then my sauna, and then uh, after that I do some breath work, I do the first evening prayers, I do Likir and whatever, you know, weird and stuff, you know, and then the last prayer, straight to bed with a book, half an hour, boom, I'm sleeping, I'm out. All right? I would tell you, all of those things, yes, maybe you can see that I'm 60 if you look at my face. Maybe. All right. Even though some people think I'm younger, but the fact is, if you didn't see my face, if I put a mask on, you can't see whether I'm 25, 35. 45. You can't see it. And I guarantee you, I'm probably healthier inside my body than 95% of everybody who is below 30 years old. I'm definitely not in doubt of that. Okay, And I know because I, I train for that natural health. That's my education, and I've been doing this for, yeah, about 30 years, more than 30 actually, all right? So I know what is the best ways to actually get the most healthy. In our family, we do not go to doctors. And why? Because we don't need to go to doctors, okay? If we even get sick, which is rare, right? Maybe I get sick once a year, and it's some kind of flu or something, 48 hours I'm back to where I was. <clears throat> Basically, the process of me and pretty much most of everybody in my family, my kids, my wife and so on, when we get sick, <clears throat> it's like this. Maybe we walk, wake up in the morning and or during the day, we can kind of feel like, hey, I'm coming down with something. All right, what do we do? Make sure that we add some raw garlic on the, on the food. We take a little bit of ginger tea. All right. And next morning, whatever we felt coming up is now going down. All right. By the second morning, we wake up and it was like, oh yeah, I was sick two days ago. It's, it's, it's extremely rare that it takes more than 48 hours to kick almost pretty much anything, all right? And all of these other things that people have problems with, like cardiovascular, diabetes, cancer, or anything, right? We're never dealing with any of those things at all because we are, it's never going to hurt us. It's never going to come to us because, inshallah, <laughs> because there is the, our body doesn't have the environment inside for those things to actually happen. All right? In case you didn't know, every single human being has cancer. Every person in this world that was ever born has cancer. 
Okay, it is a natural thing to have cancer. Okay, but the cancer cells are so few in a natural body that's not unhealthy. It's so few that they cannot spread. All right. Uh, yeah, they can't spread. They can only spread when you have the wrong environment inside meaning not enough oxygen inside and we do breath work right not enough uh, alkalinity it's too acidic and maybe there's too much um, carbon you know carbohydrates there are different things of course and you can Google that, it's another list again, right? But there are so many things that can make these things, cardiovascular cancer, you name it pretty much, right? Even the brain health, even the brain health is depending on the right environment. Because the fact is the brain is, has the first pick. So if you're eating good things in your body, you're having good you know, I have a, a air purifier, for example, here in my office, right? And so if the oxygen is good, who gets the best oxygen? My brain. It picks first, all right? When, it, when I eat something that has vitamins, minerals, the brain picks first, all right? That's how it is. I don't choose it to pick first, it just happens, all right? And then I can definitely recommend to, do, to learn Qigong. Because it, if you learn it, after a while you learn how to direct the chi inside your body. All right? And don't be like those, uh, you know, you see those people on YouTube or whatever where, oh, you can move something with your chi and you can feel somebody else's chi and all. Nah. <laughs> well, there might be some people who can do certain things, but it's irrelevant. First of all, if it takes you 50 years to learn to be able to do some of those circus tricks, Come on, you can spend more time doing something more relevant or quality things. So I don't even care to even learn those things, right? The only thing that I'm doing Qigong for is for my body, for my mental health, all right? And as well as my spiritual, because the fact is that it can help you to increase your spirituality and understanding of your own nature and stuff like that. So anyway, if you have some questions, you know, feel free to comment and ask, you know, the details about different things. Oh, by the, by the way, for dinner, I think I didn't mention the, what do I use? I usually eat something like a curry, chicken curry. Uh, that's a very common thing. We usually make a huge pot and eat it for like five days in a row. Uh, a lot of chicken, a lot of carrots, a lot of mushrooms, a uh, lot of garlic, a lot of onions and, you know, things like some cabbage and stuff as well. And we eat that with rice, okay? The best rice is not white rice. Brown rice, wild rice, if you can get it, it's better. Organic rice, of course, it has to be. So that's our typical dinner. And that's the only time during the day that I'm eating something that has high carbs, most carbohydrates, even though it has proteins and all of that. And that's because that's when you go to bed, your body starts regenerating the cells and all of those things. That's the time when you have more use for the carbs. All right? Very simple. Anyway, so like I said, feel free to comment if you have you know, if you, if you think it's all BS, then say it. That's fine. I don't I have thick skin. I don't care what people think. Okay? I really don't care. I only care what I think and what I know and what I do. Everybody else is not my problem. Okay? So, it's up to you to do what you want. Whether you want to be vegan, uh, uh, raw food is, meat eater, keto, you do what you want. It's none of my problems, it's none of my business, I don't care. You can learn something from me if you like. If you don't like, don't. If I'm just some goofy guy that is entertaining for you to look at, that's fine too, I don't care. 
all right? And I'm not in it for followers because my followers is like, they come and go. I lose two, I get two. I lose two, I get two. It's, I think it's been around 700 and whatever. For the past three years, four years, I never reach anything and I never really go much down because I don't really care, all right? I'm not in it for followers. I just share. Maybe I can give people some inspiration. That's pretty much it. That's fine for me. I, I have a feeling that if you learn something and you can, and it's useful to you, it could be useful to somebody else, so you just share it, right? And that's why I'm doing this. At least I've done my duty, all right? So feel free to click, click like, you know, maybe it can inspire other people to have a look at this crazy guy, all right? Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, let's see what am I here. Okay, and how do I do that?